In this video, we're going to be looking at tangent function graphs. So, graphs of tangent functions. So, we're looking at the base form of y is equal to tan x. Then we can apply different transformations to change that. We should also remember that tan x is equal to sine x on cos x. So, y is equal to sine x on cos x, which is also equal to tan x. Now, as tan is a trigonometric function, there are similarities as a sine and cos graphs. And that's mainly due to the cyclical nature, so it repeats over and again. And that's because of the unit circle. However, the graph is quite unusual. So without first seeing it, it's hard to know what it looks like. But once you know, then you can apply different transformations and it becomes a bit easier. And you can look at the identifiable features of it, and that can help you graph it. So what does it actually look like? So this is y is equal to tan x. So here you have the graph starting at 0, 0, and then it comes up with this shape, and then it approaches an asymptote and keeps going up, and then it, on the other side it goes down, negative now, and then once again it goes towards negative infinity, but it reaches, it approaches an asymptote, and then it repeats itself over and over again. So just like sine and cos, what I mean by this dot dot dot, is it keeps on going and going, so this section here is repeated. So we'll begin at 0, 0. So why is it 0, 0? Well, sine x is equal to 0 at tan x. So when sine x is equal to 0, tan x is going to be 0 on uh, cos x. And that's always going to give us 0. Because we're never going to get 0 on 0 because sine x and cos x aren't 0 at the same points. So for this case here, we have 0 on 1, which is equal to 0. Then Whenever sine x is equal to 0, tan x is equal to 0. So I'm going to have 0, 0 here, and then this point here is going to be pi 0, because that's when sine x is equal to 0. And once again, this point here will be 2 pi 0, etc. Then it starts to increase. The reason for this is we're in the first quadrant. So in the first quadrant, both sine x and cos x are positive. Because both are positive, therefore, tan will be positive. This keeps on going higher and higher. And as it approaches this value, which is pi on 2, sine x becomes larger, cos x becomes smaller. So sine x and cos x is going to become larger and larger and become a really, really large number. So we can see that here. It goes up higher and higher. Then, why is there an asymptote x equals pi on 2? Well, at pi on 2, what happens to cos x? We can think about it as cos pi on 2 is equal to 0. So tan x is going to equal 1 on 0, which is undefined. So we can't work that out, because 1 on 0 or any number on 0 is undefined. So that's why there's an asymptote there. So tan x cannot exist when x is equal to pi on 2, or any value where cos x is equal to 0. So for, this, for that case, all these asymptotes that we're going to be when cos x is equal to 0. So we have x is equal to pi on 2, then we're going to have 3 pi on 2, the other way around we're going to have x is equal to negative pi on 2, x is equal to negative 3 pi on 2, and it's going to keep on going, and there'll be infinite asymptotes. So we can see that this graph repeats, we can see, and as it repeats it's going to be a period. So with the sine and cos we had a period of 2 pi, but with tan there is a period of pi. So that is one of the key differences between them. So a period is equal to pi. And that's because if we look at, we have negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, that is um, the change of pi, and then it repeats itself after all those values. So here we have 0, 0, we have a period of pi, and then it's repeating at these asymptotes. So the way I find the asymptotes is I find the first x value. So if I find the first x value, then I go, well, tan x is equal to cos x. So cos x is equal to 0. Therefore, x is going to be pi on 2. So obviously, we already worked out before, but the graph, the equation could be different. So it could have been, like, if it was tan 2x minus 3, then I have to find cos x minus 3 is equal to 0. So we find the first cos x value is going to equal 0, which is x equals pi on 2 in this case. That's going to be the asymptote. Then I think, well, what's the period? The period is equal to pi 
unless it's been changed by transformation. But at the moment, the period is equal to pi. So that's like the base period. So that means that the tan is all the asymptotes are going to be pi on 2 plus pi k, where k is an integer. And the reason for this is that you can have pi on 2 here, and then plus pi is going to give you the exact same asymptote. And then minus, if k is a negative number, you're going to go minus pi, minus pi, and minus pi. And we've already talked about solving equations for cos x and sin x. So as we've done that, we can see that this is going to be similar for solving equations for tan, as tan x is equal to cos x on sin x. So you can do the same thing about the plus pi k for the x-intercepts, because we know that the x-intercepts are when sin x is equal to 0. Uh, yeah, when sin x is equal to 0. So when sin x is equal to 0, that is obviously going to be 0 plus pi k. Because you're going to have pi plus 2 pi, and then go down here, which is negative pi, 0, where k is an integer. So we can just write that the x-intercepts are at x is equal to pi k, where pi is a period. So we'll talk about more in transformations how the period could change. But whatever the period is, the period is there. So with the range of tan compared to sun and cos, the range is r. So that means the range can be, all y values can be encompassed by this graph because it keeps on going to the infinity and it also goes to negative infinity. However, with the domain, it's all real values apart from all these asymptotes here because they're undefined of these asymptotes. So sine and cos have a domain of all real numbers but then their range is restricted. However, for tan, it's the other way around. Their um, range is all real numbers, however, their domain is restricted. So another key feature of this graph is that we know that tan pi on 4 is equal to 1. So as we know that, we can think, well, the, this value here, pi on 4, is going to equal 1. Pi on 4, 1. Then this is going to, and pi on 4 is in between 0 and pi on 2. So you can think that halfway in between, we're going to have a y value of 1. And then this is going to repeat every pi. So between pi and 3 pi on 2, so halfway in between, it's going to hit 1 as well, and then 1. So you don't have to draw... Uh, label these in a graph when you have to draw a tan. However, it's good for graphing, uh, especially if you have a scale on the y-axis, because if the scale has, let's say, 7 there, then this graph would be inaccurate. So we want 1, then we have like pi and 4 in the middle, in the middle, and then as it's relating to the unit circle down here, is going to be negative pi and 4, and it's going to be negative 1. So it's going to be 1, but as it's in a different quadrant, the fourth quadrant, tan is negative. So therefore, we're going to have negative pi and 4, negative 1, and all the values halfway in between will be negative 1 here. So negative 1, negative 1. So when drawing the tan graph, I like to think about that when it sort of looks like that a bit, and then after you reach sort of the halfway points, it becomes a lot steeper, and you approach the two asymptotes on either side. So what happens when we dilate the tan graph in the x-axis? So this is replacing y with y on k. We get y on k is equal to tan x, so therefore y is equal to k tan x. So the thing with this is that with k, and when you're dilating in the x-axis, so make sure you're talking about the x-axis here, there is no change to the period, and also therefore no change to the x-intercepts. So it's going to look exactly the same. The x-intercepts are going to be the same. The uh, asymptotes will also be the same. However, it's going to change in steepness. So we have all these values. All of them are the same. Coming down. However, the steepness changes. So if we have, let's say, y is equal to 3 tan x, that means it's going to become steeper, like that. And then it comes down like that. That and that. And when graphing, it often doesn't make too much of a difference unless k is a large uh, number. So you still want the general shapes. So obviously, that's not a great graph. But I'm just trying to show it is a bit steeper on either side. And that's due to this 3 here. And you can think that 
at pi on 4 we used to have pi on 4 1 but now we're going to have pi on 4 3 then if k was a half so if we had to graph let's say y is equal to a half tan x then we're going to make it um, less steep along here so it'll be more like that and it'll come down it's obviously here instead of being one it's now going to be a half so you can see that graph go on either side like this and once again the asymptote stays the same and the period is still at pi